In this lecture, we will see how to reduce background noise in Adobe Audition. There are many different types of background noise, but we will only look at one type of noise. It is the constant hissing noise or white background noise. No matter how good your recording environment is, you will always get this type of hissing noise in your recording. I will discuss this in another lecture about the cause of this noise. For now, let's assume you have a little bit of this type of noise and you want to reduce it. You can see I have recorded almost 10 seconds of such noise at the beginning. I also have a large silent part at the end. You do not need that long noise sample or silent part for the noise reduction process. I recorded this silent part to show you a very important thing in Adobe Audition. If you have experience with noise reduction in other software like Audacity, you may know one thing. Noise reduction in Audacity degrades the audio quality too much. You can do a very small amount of noise reduction in Audacity without degrading the audio quality. Compared to Audacity, Adobe Audition works much better at noise reduction. You can reduce a great amount of noise in Adobe Audition without hampering the audio quality. But to achieve that, your noise sample selection has to be perfect. I will show you that first, then I will show you the noise reduction process. I will focus only on the silent part now, so let me zoom into this part. The noise waveform almost looks the same in every place but it is not. If I play the noise only part, keep an eye on the meter. You will see a jump in the meter suddenly, but that is not obvious in the waveform. So we need to understand why sudden jumps during playback. In regular volume, it is hard to identify the cause of sudden spikes in the meter. There is a tool in Adobe Audition that can better identify the issue. There is a toggle button at the top to show spectral frequency display. It is very useful to find a proper noise sample. You can see a new display appeared at the bottom. You can think of this area as a frequency heat map. You can see which frequency has how much energy. The greater the energy, the brighter the color will be. You can see a sudden red spot appeared here. It is another kind of noise, not the regular hissing noise. Then I have another brighter spot which is a distant car honk. I also have some more areas with mouth noise, breathing noise, etc. I can identify these noises from the spectral display, but not from the waveform alone. I can clean up the audio by selecting these areas and deleting them. If you delete something by selecting from the spectral display, it is also deleted from the waveform. Waveform and spectral display are not separate things, they are just different representations of the same audio. Deleting those is not part of the main process of noise reduction, I just deleted them to get a clean audio. I will now move into the actual noise reduction process. I now have a uniform hissing noise in this beginning area. I can take a sample of 1 or 2 seconds of noise from that. The recording on the screen is a raw recording, no processing has been done on it yet. I will apply the standard minus 3 dB normalize as the first effect. That will raise the noise floor. It is important to see the correct noise floor for the proper configuration of the noise reduction effect. If I play the beginning part, you will see the noise volume raised. It is time to select a 1 second or 2 second noise sample. The actual requirement of noise sample length is quite less, but a 1 or 2 second sample will give you the best result in noise reduction. I will select this part and go to the effects menu. There are several effects of noise reduction, and I will use the noise reduction process. The noise reduction process is most effective for the kind of noise I am trying to remove. You should also use this. We now have to configure the noise reduction settings. We will mainly configure these two settings. Those options are disabled now because I have not captured the noise print. You can see a warning message about that. I already have a noise sample selected, and if I capture noise print, Audition will use that to recognize and remove noise. Click on the Capture Noise Print button. The noise print is now captured, and you can see a graph. The red and yellow dots are the noise. The green dots are the threshold. Noise below the threshold or green dots will be removed with noise reduction. If I adjust noise reduction, you will see the green dot will move. It is not super important to understand, but if you want to know how noise reduction is working, you get an idea from the graph. We will keep things simple. Noise reduction sets the aggressiveness. It should be between 50 to 80%. The more percentage you set, the more noise will be reduced. But that can degrade audio quality, so you have to listen and adjust. We can preview how the noise reduction will work. This play icon at the bottom will play the audio with noise reduction. I will move the window a bit so that we can see the meter. If I preview this, you will see less noise in the meter. There is a toggle button in the preview. If it is green, that means it will play the audio with the current noise reduction settings. If it is off, it will not apply the settings. Let's activate loop and preview the noise reduction effect.
you can see more noise when the effect is off and less noise when the effect is on. It is a very effective way to configure any effect. You can play and adjust the settings and see how it affects. The reduce by decides how much noise will be removed. If I set it too high, you see no noise in the meter. However, you should not use more than 16 dB noise reduction for professional grade audio. If you can stay around 12 dB or less, that will be best. Otherwise, you will find the actual voice quality degrades. I will now preview the talking parts with these noise reduction settings and adjust them. Before taking this course, you must be wondering why you should learn Adobation. The answer depends on what you are trying to achieve and what is your current situation. Adobation is the most popular for voice editing. It has all the necessary features to make professional grade audio. If you are into professional I see it the voice quality is not degraded at 70% and at 12 dB. Let's check how it is on the silent parts. For very high quality audio it would be best if the noise always stayed below minus 54. But I have not recorded it in a very ideal environment. So I will keep it the way it is now. The noise is not listenable, so this audio is perfect for YouTube videos and online courses. I guess you get the idea of how noise reduction works on Adobe Audition. I have to now apply these settings to my audio. Currently, only the noise part is selected. I have to either select the entire file or select nothing. There is a select entire file button here. I told you in a previous lecture that there is an alternate way to apply an effect. If you select nothing on the waveform and apply an effect, it will be applied to the entire waveform. You can see nothing is selected on the waveform. I will now apply the effect with these settings. You do not need to worry about the advanced settings. It works fine with the default values in advanced settings. Click on apply. The noise reduction is now applied, and we can verify by playing the noise only part. Practice noise reduction with your recording to understand what is the best noise reduction settings for your audio. If you are watching this video on YouTube, you can pre-order this course at half price from this Buy Me A Coffee page. The course will be released on September 19th, and the price will be at least doubled on the release. If you want to learn how to produce high-quality voiceover or audiobook narration using Adobe Audition, enroll in this course.